Thank you, Mr. President, for convening this plenary meeting of the General Assembly following the veto cast by a permanent member of the Security Council on 18 April on Palestine's application for admission to the United Nations. While we have noted that Palestine's application for membership at the United Nations was not approved by the Security Council because of the aforesaid veto, I would like to state here at the very outset that in keeping with India's long-standing position, we hope that this would be reconsidered in due course and that Palestine's endeavor to become a member of the United Nations will get endorsed. We've also noted your intention to convene the plenary meeting of the 10th emergency special session of the General Assembly regarding this matter shortly. India will participate actively in this meeting. As for the conflict in Gaza, this has been ongoing for over six months, and the humanitarian crisis that it has triggered has been increasing. There is also the potential for growing instability in the region and beyond. In this context, we view the Security Council's adoption of Resolution 2728 last month as a positive step. As for India's position on the conflict, I will make the following four brief points. One, the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas has led to a large-scale loss of civilian lives, especially women and children, and a humanitarian crisis, which is simply unacceptable. We have strongly condemned the deaths of civilians in the conflict. We firmly believe that international law and international humanitarian law must be respected by everyone under all circumstances. Two, the terror attacks in Israel on 7 October were shocking, and they deserve our unequivocal condemnation. There can be no justification for terrorism and hostage-taking. India has a long-standing and uncompromising position against terrorism in all its forms and manifestations, and we demand the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages. Three, it is imperative that humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza be scaled up immediately in order to avert a further deterioration in the situation. We urge all parties to come together in this endeavor. We welcome the efforts of the United Nations and the international community in this regard. I will state here that India has provided humanitarian aid to the people of Palestine and that we will continue to do so. For my final point, my leadership has repeatedly emphasized that only a two-state solution achieved through direct and meaningful negotiations between both sides on final status issues will deliver an enduring peace. India is committed to supporting a two-state solution where the Palestinian people are able to live freely in an independent country within secure borders with due regard to the security needs of Israel. To arrive at a lasting solution, Mr. President, we would urge all parties to foster conditions conducive to resuming direct peace negotiations at an early date. Thank you.